bacon hay. Hello everybody, welcome to the Bales Hay Farm and Ranch YouTube. I am Trevor Bales. It's mostly squeezing and a little farming and very minimal ranching. So Bales Hay Farm show and Trevor squeezing. Bales Hay Squeeze Show. Bales Hay Show. Bales Hay Farm Squeeze Show. You know, you guys know the drill. Before we get into it, share, like, comment, please, 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 please. And then uh, thank you to all the sponsors. Bales Hay Sales. Man, my dad's awesome. Um, uh, PDI, Performance Diesel Incorporated. Flew it all. And, uh, oh, someone's calling me. Forney. Oh, it's Brian. I just called him. That was Brian. I've, I've had this disc on demo for quite a while. I was like, Brian, we got to give this guy an answer. Like, he's going to want to know uh, what our decision is. Um, it's a big Suico, S-W-E-C-O, uh, 24 wide. I think it's 24 wide. So what he's doing right now, in the past, uh, if you've seen videos, you know we do this. Because we don't have much of a... a um, rotation anymore and because we're farming back to back to back um seasons i mean we're, we're either we're always growing something we don't really take a winter off we plant after the alfalfa's uh yield is going down we'll plant ryegrass into a field of alfalfa we'll just drill it directly in we'll make a real pretty uh half season mix rye alfalfa mix and then we'll finish out the season with alfalfa and then we will plant Sudan grass in it and the Sudan grass if there's a shortage in in alfalfa and feed that year then we'll bale it up uh, this year there is no shortage in feed so we're not even going to bale it my my theory is my thought is if I bale this up then I then I am competing with the heat feed I already have in the stack and I really don't want to compete with myself selling products so if I if I'm just adding to the supply then the uh, then the demand is going to go down in the past we've grown the sedan oh my gosh like seven seven eight feet tall but uh manuel said oh, let's not do that it's hard to it's hard to turn it in it's all right into the ground all right cool so uh we're not doing that this year we're, as you can see it's very short it would have made a nice mix but like i said i just don't need it first things first what he does is he goes around the field and then the second he knocks down these borders this is this is a border that's why it's dirt and then the uh crop on either side so he'll go through and knock the borders down and then he's going to disc uh sideways across the field last year we disc with the borders just up and down and we had a lot of problems with seed and irrigation which that was the first time we've actually disc with the borders and we just decided we're not going to do it again but at the same time that was with a different disc i kind of want to disc one border straight up and down just we compare we can compare last year's mess up with that old disc and this new disc but um uh yeah brian said yeah that's a good disc it's a lot of money who seventy six thousand dollars no sixty seven thousand dollars there's a lot of money for a disc we did get the backhoe off our hands i've got that older backhoe which is just fine for what we're gonna do um, I do not need a 2023 backhoe. This disc will get three, 400 acres on it every single year. To me, that makes a lot more sense than a backhoe that in six months had 50 hours on it. So um, I really like the idea of, of this disc. Uh, Henry will probably use it. It's so well built. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna call Craig as soon as I quit making this, turn this camera off and tell him we really like the results. Come look at it if he wants. And um, send the papers over. Ugh. But, oh, my buddy, I just got the phone with my buddy Ed. You guys know Ed, Ed Riddell. He called me. He knows I'm looking for a grader because I sold that. I auctioned off that other junk. He found a grader. It's an early 90s, one, uh, 14G. He ran it when he was a young man, and then he ran it. Oh, he's still young, but he ran it when he was a teenager. He's ran, ran it again in his 30s. It's a one owner machine, low hours. Um, and so he's thinking, he's the guy, he knows the guy, he wants to sell it. He says it would be a perfect machine for me. So he's gonna get me some more info. 
oh, and I'm not gonna go to the boss, but he is not gonna, oh, I go over my $120,000 backhoe to a $70,000 disc and a $70,000 grater. So the money, <laughs> you, you get two things for the same price, so I guess that's good, but holy smokes. But you gotta have it, I gotta have a grater. I could, I could rent one, but man, like this road I'm driving on right now, I would love to grade this road. Uh, every road we have, I would just, I, I enjoy running a grader too. It's kind of nice. Um, can't really talk on the phone. Well, and the good thing too, Ed, he, he works for a big construction company and a lot of like the job they're on now, it's four tens. And so he's like, dude, I could, I could pick up odd jobs here and there. And over time we could end up paying for that grader. Um, which I re I'm all about too. Um, I, I'd show you, we'll, we're gonna do more work on these ditch banks. I'll show you more with these ditch banks and why owning a big loader, a backhoe, and a grader are important things that we need for maintaining these fields. But I just saw Jose going down the road with the load of hay for the feed store out west. So I gotta get back and jump in the squeeze. Luckily, today is a minimal squeeze day. Ugh, I'm tired of being in that thing. So that's good. I hope you guys enjoy the drone of the of the tractor. Okay, I don't know what happened yesterday, but I didn't film anything else. So we are on now today too. Um, and a big storm came through last night, which I'm not gonna complain very much because we haven't had any storms this year. Um, darn it though, I, uh, I, I, one of my tarps, I ran out of tarp space. No, 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 I messed up. And they, we lay down the strap that hangs out the side for the tarps. Um, and you lay it down knowing you're gonna have a specific size width of a tarp. So we laid it down for a five wide. Unfortunately, we only put stacks four wide. So the, the strap wasn't working. So what I did was I laid telephone poles, and some old power poles, some wooden poles. We laid along the side of the stack of hay and then tied the strap to that oh the wind came through and it picked up it like still ripped the tarps off and picked up the power bowls so oh that kind of sucks and it really stings because it was it's really nice hay underneath this tarp but uh we're gonna drive by right now and take a look it's kind of funny at my house just two miles away we didn't get much rain well down here at the farm we got quite a bit of rain so here's the tarp and it got uh it, 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 you can see the poles down there laying on the ground. But it, oh, there's one up in the air you can see. There it is. And, uh, I'm so sad. <laughs> like I said, I'm not gonna complain because it's been a good year. I'm just sad. Ugh, a lot of nice hay in this, this stack. Luckily, it's not very much. Look at that pole. Just picked it up. Oh, the tarp guy just texted me while I'm videoing. Anyways, uh, loop around and see what these guys want to do. And there's more rain to come. It's 7 a.m. There's a, the radar says another storm's gonna be over us at like 10 a.m. So we shall see. But all the other tarps look good. Just the one that the power poles are holding it down. Man, I thought those were a great idea too. I was like, heck yeah, these are wooden power poles. They're not that heavy. Look at all the water. Ugh. Tree branch fell down at my house too. That's not a not a big deal. Ugh, sorry, I was terrible about filming. Anyways, here we are the next day. Uh, again, it rained and uh, not a lot though. But it's funny, it rained right on, right on the office and the fields we're trying to work on, uh, preparing for planting. Everywhere else is fine. We're already cutting again. We started cutting yesterday, um, which this is now. Monday and it rained on Friday night Saturday morning anyways sorry jumping around this ground is still too wet though like I said it rained right here of all places over half an inch um, and he was trying it out but you you could see where he was picking mud off the ring roller if it was just the ripper I could maybe get by but I really don't even like that because it just slices right through the mud it doesn't lift the dirt like I was saying on the last video um, this was disked up uh, normally if it hadn't been disked yet the water would have ran right off and he probably could be ripping right now 
but because it was disked, it left a lot of, uh, opened the soil up, and so it wasn't packed anymore, and the, and the rain went straight down. So instead of running off to the bottom of the field, it, uh, it was able to penetrate the soil. And now we have, see I'm walking on it, and I can... Yeah, so he already he shut down, which I'm glad. I didn't even have to tell him. He did it on his own, which is good. I'm going to walk over to where he made a couple passes and show you guys. I really like it when it, man, when it's dry, when it's real dry, it, it really lifts the soil. Ooh, here's a big old clod. So he made a couple passes through here before it rained. You can see it, it lifts these big chunks like this out of the ground, which is what we what we want with that ripper. But then we want that. That ring roller to really, that uh, colt packer to bust those up. <clears throat> but here, and we're even at the at the upper end of the field right now. Yeah, see this? It's sticky, and all that sticks to those rings, and even the shanks. So um, I'm glad he stopped, but it stinks if. If we were to get another rain, that's why it's so important, man, I mean, other farmers will know when you have time, you got to go, 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 because you just don't know how long that'll last. So with this rain, it puts us back a couple days. Then if we get another rain, it's a couple more days. So it can just, it just, it com compounds on itself. But um, hopefully he'll be in here ah, tomorrow or the next day. We'll see. I don't know. We almost need to run over this with some uh, shallow teeth to open it up to let it let it dry out more. But look at this soil, though. After, I mean, there was two foot tall Sudan grass out here, and that disc did a good job just turning it all under. Manuel was telling me he likes how deep how that disc is so heavy; it goes pretty deep. I was hoping to be come out here to run it myself and and get the camera down low so you guys could see, but. The squeeze life, stuck in a squeeze. The forecast is clear, gets back up to, like today's only 101 or so, but it gets back up to 110 in a couple days. So I'm not too concerned. I mean, if the forecast showed rain, 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 I would be very concerned because this field would be sitting here um, <laughs> waiting, waiting and waiting. So, but with the forecast as it is, and if there was rain coming, he might we might just unhook that ring roller and go. Let's rip it up, get it ripped. We won't we won't roll the clods and we'll just go. But with with the clear with the clear forecast, we'll wait. We'll get hot today, hot tomorrow, hot the next day. This uh all this moisture should get burnt up. <clears throat> oh gosh. Good thing I got four-wheel drive. Do you guys feel this? Woo! They're rough. <laughs> We're gonna get up close to them with the camera. Ah, my poor pickup. Oh. Ugh, sucking dust. I still, ah, oh man. Like, like I talked about, I know we need to be doing as much field work as we can. I really don't like how, how much moisture is still in this dirt though. I wished it was a hair dryer and then we'd bring up bigger, bigger dirt clods, bigger chunks of dirt. 
you bring up those bigger chunks, you're bringing up the root system of the old alfalfa stand. It's still bringing up a lot. That's from alfalfa. Now I gotta run out to my father-in-law's farm to look at uh look at some hay to do some custom custom harvesting on, then I'll buy it from him. Uh my buddy, my buddy Chad, you guys have seen him. He needs he needs some hay, something about just flip, flipping it, if you will. I I just because we do so much work with my father-in-law, I just buy it like I'm buying it, and then I add ten dollars a ton, and then Chad takes it. If I freight it to him, then I only add five dollars a ton, five to ten dollars a ton, just for the time and everything, all the transactions that go through my office. So we still add. It's not very much, but um, it helps him out, keeps my equipment going, because uh, we do make we make a little bit on the harvesting side, not very much, but that's just good. Keeps my guys with hours, where if we're not because like this right now, I've got one guy driving instead of my swather drivers not in this field. My two rake drivers aren't in this field. The three baler drivers aren't in this field. My two roadsider drivers aren't in this field. My truck drivers, we're not hauling hay out of this field anymore. So when we start taking acres out, it takes a lot of work, hours away from employees. So if I can pick up some extra acres, it helps keep keep my guys getting hours which they really want they're here especially the work visa guys they're here to work not to sit around and hang out they're here to make money and send it home to their families then uh, my delivery guy he's on vacation right now so I gotta jump in the retriever to make a delivery I think two Ugh, one's in the middle of the city Ugh. it's a small feed store gosh dang it Guys, thanks for watching the show. Sorry, it was jumbled and bounced around and wasn't very uh, wasn't very thought out. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.